Hi everyone, my name is Lucas Gomes and I am information designer uh, in Next Journal, a uh, digital newspaper in Sao Paulo, Brazil, but I'm a guy from Rio de Janeiro. And this is the first time that I speak in English for an audience. So I ask you patients, I am little nervous, but my presentation is about the visual summary and some things that I learned during my projects. Uh, well, like an information designer, I see my job like an advice for people overloaded with information. And this invite can be for the most varied things, like the pandemic status or what's happening in, in Amazon rainforest, or even songs by Jody Ben, a Brazilian cool, a very cool Brazilian singer. And here you can see the most common words in his songs. In other words, I see your job like um, create bridges for those people who don't know our point of view or read data, but this invite can cannot demand too much for the reader. And so I think to myself, that would be nice doing some visual summaries, like a part of my job, because it's turning my job more inviting for the people. Um, for example, that story that I show you guys, according to medium metrics, is without image, without my tips, it would take six minutes to read. Meanwhile, the same history, it would take uh, half the time. Uh, so, I brought, I brought, sorry, five tips that I learned doing my job and I share with you and I use my own history like an example. And this is my how text, a large text book about my life story. And here I go with my first tip and it is defining what's essential in your goal. Uh, and the title can be your ref reference. I frankly think to myself, I can't lose sight of this title because it will guide my choice. And I select another phrase in my text, my highlights. And from these highlights, I get my second tip is the question is what's your text you can turn in a spreadsheet? And here you can get dates, places, objects, and however do you want. And you can turn uh, maybe a, sorry, maybe a visual timeline with more potential to get people attention, right? So my third tip is what to in your text, identify what you can turn in an image. Look at the stats and taking about localization. And I think this, it could be a map and my map uh, transformed the text in considerable smaller. Well, and my fourth tip is to identify what you can turn or write in our hyperlink. I think everything I could need to create parentheses to contextualize I can just turn in a link. By this way, you have a smaller text block and therefore more inviting for the people. Look at this example and take about your preference. And I use the links and I cut my text block in the half. And this is my last tip is what your text you can broken down. Uh, in fact, size is also perception. In other words, a text block divided by images has more entry points uh, than a larger text block. And the, the text without images, it carries a bigger fraud from the reader, right? And this is the same topic before and after the, the process to broken down the text. And here is a part of final result. The larger text block 
and the visual summary, the same history. Uh, I also brought uh, other examples, works I've done with this perspective and where I learned the, the tips. So, uh, this fifth job is a work about the day of fire in Amazon rainforest. Uh, and this is a day where the deforestation was a record in the Amazon. And the other project is a pro uh, job that I'm doing in Excel journal. It's called the, the illustrated history of knowledge where I tell a summary and the infographics with my team, the history about scientific discoveries, like the computers, like the insulin, and other summaries. And that's all, folks. I thank your attention. I thank you, patients. And in this PDF, there are two links for the two lessons from my material. And for any questions, you see me in the Slack. Bye. Yes, hello, good morning. Um, I must say, again, this time it won't be my first presentation in Portuguese. Not today. So uh, I, I don't know how many uh. lives I need to do that, but um, definitely not today. Um, very warm welcome from, from Austria and uh, a pleasure to be here. And so nice uh, to see the presentation of Luca because uh, there are also five steps. And um, may I introduce uh, to my uh, non-friend, uh, but very famous, but he doesn't know that he is my friend. And uh, it's uh, Sir Richard Saul Wurman, uh, still alive, a uh, very old man living in the United States. Uh, and in his book of Information Anxiety, he came up with Latch. And, um, and this is the subtitle of this presentation. And there's a slight change in that, that it's not about uh, the structure, but as we say, uh, it's about the stories, how to find the structure to discover endless stories in whatever we do. And for this, um, it's Latch. And Latch is nothing else than um, the five uh, parameters or um, aspects of location, alphabet, time, category, and hierarchy. And um, if we may start with our fancy famous friend's t-shirt, which is not existing yet, but maybe uh, a good year afterwards, um, just to tell the story of Ledge with this um, t-shirt. And we may start with A alphabet and uh, we know it's a t-shirt. It's not a jacket, it's not the coat. Uh, it's uh, something which indicates what the purpose might be. And uh, with this A, we continue to the category and have a little look what kind of elements we have in the t-shirt. And the category, uh, all you know, is it's just about the differentiation. It's not better or worse or more than less. It's just about what's different. And in this aspect, what are the different parts of the t-shirt? Um, we have uh, some textile for the shirt. We have textile for the seam. We have uh, uh, maybe two different textiles for the label and uh, for the washing uh, instructions. We have uh, embroidery uh, on the top and maybe we have some prints. So uh, these are the different elements different, but of course, all of them have a story. This was a very uh, superficial um, element description, but of course we can get very, very deep. So it's not only the question, what kind of textile it is, what kind of seam, but of course, <gasps> what's the chemical uh, formula for that? So as you can see, whatever we do, we could start very, very easy, but we can go deep like crazy in uh, the differentiation, how many C's and O's we have in the label uh, compared with the C's and O's in the ink um, for the printing. That's the category. Very close to the category, uh, that's the hierarchy. And the hierarchy is, as you know, everything which we can measure. And uh, for this measurement, of course, most important, what's the price of the T-shirt? Second, what's my size? But also in a hierarchy, of course, uh, what are the properties? And here you see it's just about the cotton parameters from the consistency, from the fineness, maturity, length, uniformity. These are all data already we can gather and we can compare 
what uh, the parameter of the uh, seam compared to the parameters of the t-shirt compared to the parameters of the label. And so we have already ooh, tons of data. If we continue from uh, the hierarchy to L for the location, then of course the very simple layout is uh, where was the t-shirt produced? Where did we buy it? Uh, how and when and where did we wear it? So what's the journey of the t-shirt? And of course, what's the place of um, recycling or uh, getting rid of our t-shirt? So uh, as already Lucas said, uh, everything could be uh, displayed in a map. So just for a simple t-shirt, like everybody of us has, um, it's already a long journey. And again, if you go very, very deep and ask yourself, where does the seam come from? Where does the ink come from? Where does the stitch come from? Um, where does the color pigments of the stitch are produced? Um, and maybe even where are the machines produced and come from and bought. So you see, we have already um, a fantastic matrix of endless data, this for location. And of course, all of this location, we can pack into a timeline. Um, when it was produced, how long ago, how many uh, days, months it was on stock until it was bought, how long uh, did we really uh, take it and wear it? and um, after how many years um, it was um, disposed uh, by ourselves. And again, of course, we can play this game uh, not only for the T-shirt itself, but uh, where is the origin of the cotton? What kind of continent? Um, where is the origin of the ink? Where is the origin of uh, the seam? Um, and uh, all the elements, we have a location, and of course, we have the timeline of um, for the cotton, how long does it need it that it was uh, major and grown? So um, finally, uh, we are back to the beginning and we are back to the alphabet. And the alphabet, of course, could be the one part is, um, what's the name? On the other hand, um, what kind of people uh, are in touch with this uh, element, product or item? And um, as we heard tonight, night, and in your time yesterday, it's just about the people which making the fun stories. And again, can you imagine how many people have been involved in producing, wearing this T-shirt or people you met with the T-shirt? Just uh, have a look on your own T-shirt now and think who has already seen you with this T-shirt? And then you can make a fantastic map and have fantastic stories and data on that. And um, just consider all the people from the factory, from the farmers, from the shops, from the transport system, uh, and maybe even all these people also working in regenerating and recycling uh, our fibers and textiles. And maybe there's a, a lady uh, inside, and uh, if we see the lady, and she has another t-shirt, so we can start the story again and uh, discover new aspects and a lot of other people. So we are back to Ledge. And um, this is so simple, and I know it's very banal, it's not scientific, but uh, it's a real, very stable and very raw structure, not to forget any aspect um, and um, discover fantastic stories. For this, thanks a lot and a pleasure to be with you. Obrigado. Hi, everyone. Well, uh, I will introduce myself. Uh, I'm from I'm from Rio, if you don't know uh, uh, Rio. Uh, this is a famous cover song of Anita that became a famous name in Brazil, if you don't know Anita. So, uh, like her, I'm from North Carolina of Rio de Janeiro. Uh, my story with uh, data and design starts at LabVis, a research lab at Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, where I took my degree in graphic design. Uh, since then, I have been working with visual identities, interfaces, data, and graphics with about seven years, I can say, of experience. Two of them uh, working to uh, as an infographic designer at U Global, one of the biggest uh, newspapers in Brazil. So I will present today, uh, how was the process of the dynamic logo that we created for this package event and how to build it uh, using tools from Adobe and Google, very simple 
very near uh, close uh, for our design. So the, everything starts with uh, an idea. And Carol came to, uh, to me to, to, to help uh, her to, to build this, this brand. Uh, so we start doing uh, a brainstorming, uh, using those like keywords and, uh, and what we want to bring to the event and, uh, and mood boards to organize our ideas and goals with the visualizing. So we, wa uh, we, uh, we want uh, a very organic, spontaneous celebration, fun, open spaces, making contacts, exchange experience. It's about database, it's about infographic. Uh, brainstorming was like really, it was really about ideas. So I, we go really deep like in things like it, uh, how we can, uh, uh, how images can bring connections. So uh, I put some very strong image here, like the hand of the uh, 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 main cave. You know, it's a very strong thing. Like people from past can still feel connected. So, uh, and the way you, they, you, they use uh, pictograms, images, and draws to, and even though, even today we can still be connected. Uh, we also put some, uh, we also put some images here, like literally uh, with the pandemic, we are so distant, uh, maybe an infrared camera can make uh, us feel more near with each other, you know, like this image, you can almost feel the arm. So we are, we literally bring this to us. Uh, and, uh, uh, Scaverman, they 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 uh, they have a lot of footprints, and today we have also a lot of own footprints. That seems like a, a virus, you know. We, we, when we talk, when we talk, we uh, transmit uh, particles, information, a lot of things. So uh, we put this out in, in the mood board and uh, and send it to Linda and. Uh, uh, sorry if I don't speak your name. Sorry, uh, how how can I say your name? Darta. 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 Sorry, <laughs> Darta. Uh, and we uh, put all these crazy ideas and feelings and thoughts and invite uh, Darta and Linda to help us to create the brand. So uh, I will uh, ask them to talk a little bit now. Yes. So hello, first of all, uh, I'm Darta. I'm a student from Art Academy of Latvia, and together with Linda, we are here this summer in an internship uh, in Information Design Studio HIP, led by Martin. And we are very happy to be in this project and cooperate with Gabriel and Carol and do this uh, visual identity for famous friend event. And uh, yes. Based on uh, the given uh, visuals, thoughts, and mood boards, uh, we came up to very energetic uh, and uh, wire, wire, uh, energetic uh, color palette here, as you can see. And um, uh, the idea uh, was to present uh, playfulness uh, and connection and collaboration. And uh, we can go further. And uh, these qualities uh, lead us uh, to idea <clears throat> about the game uh, constructor. Uh, and this is the main uh, key visual element, uh, a piece uh, that uh, merges two points or two famous friends um, as participants uh, in this uh, event. And uh, here we come together with only one friend uh, but uh, in this uh, meeting, so we, we build up a chain um, where we gain new knowledge and uh, experience and friends together. And uh, the same uh, is also the idea of constructor, uh, where you can combine uh, many the same elements and build uh, something uh, new, something big and uh, very great uh, system. And uh, here you can see our three ideas um, where uh, actually all, all, in all ideas, construction um, idea represents that um, there, there are joining two, um, two 
um, points and make uh, this uh, this construction like uh, bigger. And uh, in first, uh, you can see that um, elements um, consist uh, of uh, the same shape, but the fill is different, uh, representing uh, um, yeah each participant and pair like uh, individual. And uh, the second one is like more experimenting, um, representing the creative process in our fields. And uh, in third, uh, there there is experiment with the sewn buttons. So further, we just uh, combine the first and the third direction and uh, made a logotype and uh, gave these visuals to Gabriel. And uh, he will definitely tell more about this technical side, what uh, he did. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so uh, she, uh, uh, they came with these really good ideas. Uh, I only uh, forgot to, to like, talk about this one here. Uh, this uh, was the ideas, and this was how uh, how the look and feel you wanna. Uh, uh, that one uh, archive, you know, is maybe this is was our goal of the visual, and um, then we uh, you made uh, you get this idea, and you start to make some uh, some tests to 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 see how uh, the brand uh, the, the the brand can uh, can be used. Uh, uh, First, uh, we don't uh, was think about a dynamic logo. It was not our first idea, but when uh, we saw these pieces and uh, what we can do with this, we start to think about how we can bring it, uh, maybe, that maybe we can bring data to these pieces. So we started to, uh, uh, some, uh, to, to make some uh, uh, research and get some creations and here are three works uh, very good that I, I like very much. Uh, they are different approaches on how you can use the data and and make it in a uh, and make it work in a brand. So Nordic Kings are uh, uh, Nordic a very data driven brand that changes its colors and shapes depends on the temperature and wind direction. Uh, the second one, Data Portrait, is by Georgia Lupi for TED events. And the, the last one, uh, Data Self by Café, a design studio for top of food, are a similar pro a proposal of encode personal data in shapes, colors, direction, bring connection with people in this event. So uh, these two, this, this two last here, uh, they are using in events like this one, and, and they are using data to make people uh, break their eyes, make conversation, know each other, so I think uh, we thought that it was a very good idea to use in this event. And uh, inspired by them, we have do some experiments. Uh, the one thing that I, I, I have to note, uh, this uh, two first one here, uh, Georgia Lupe and Nordkin, uh, uh, they use apps, like you have a, progr a programmer. Uh, so they are very difficult to, to implement. But the approach of Cafe was really nice because they use uh, uh, data, uh, da variable data, uh, Illustrator, that uh, is a very helpful tool uh, and more easy to implement. So, uh, his are our brands, you know, uh, they are, uh, there's a lot of pieces, uh, and we encode data, uh, make some chances in, uh, in the same piece. So, uh, here are four pieces. Three pieces uh, uh, with texture, only shape, and online and on in, uh, in line, you know, and one that uh, uh, puts all things together, like in a piece, you know, like a clock you put uh, on a, a final piece. Um, and that's me, you know. Uh, uh, I'm a uh, uh, I'm a designer, and I love to, I love to read magazines and articles. Uh, I use whatever works. Now I'm use uh, I have. Uh, Android, uh, iPad, Windows, everything that works. Uh, I, I in general use spreadsheets. I'm from South America. I really like it to re, uh, watch Netflix and TV series. 
and I'm in between 25 and 34. <laughs> uh, so uh, with this approach, we uh, are achieve a lot of combinations, you know, and we are achieving uh, our first goal that was like this one here. The look and feel was that, and with uh, with the uh, uh, data we can we we can bring this, you know. Uh, but for a uh, real application on the on the on this pocket event, we decided to put it smaller. So we put an avatar. Uh, you can you, uh, you can see it in this slide. So when I finish this presentation, uh, we, we will share the uh, the archive with all logos of it of, of each participant that you can download and put as avatar in Slack. Uh, and I represent now the, uh, the each part of the, of the piece. So we have the location, age, uh, and uh, each piece uh, change his colors and direction. You know, only with this uh, mixing of the direction, color, texture, we can build this. Uh, we are uh, able to build this brand. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> so. Uh, Okay, Gabriel, but how you, you build it? So uh, how, how was the ingredients to, to build it? So it's very simple. Uh, it's, uh, oh, I'm, I don't know why it's happening, sorry. Uh, how to generate data-driven logo. So we, we have form, sheets, and illustrator. Um, I, I summarize this, like you have a raw, ta a raw table of, of data, you put in a sheets, uh, you have to simplify, to simplify this data, so I use keywords. Plus the keywords, I have it to 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 uh, concatenate this, uh, split this in a uh, in a keyword and image address because each ima uh, each piece uh, is literally made and uh, is used by Illustrator. So to 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 able to Illustrator to use these pieces, uh, I have to make it this list. So. When I deliver this list to Illustrator, I use an, a, a, a variable uh, dynamic da variable dynamic data to 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 export this, and I script to rename all the pieces. Uh, everything is really automatic. Like I can do this right now, and something about five minutes will everything will be done. So it's a way to really automatize everything. Uh, so I start with form the form that we can uh, get the data. Uh, this, uh, uh, the form is create a table uh, when you can have the answers. Uh, I, I get the answers uh, from each one, like you can see here, like Carol, continent, America do Sul. And but this is so big and each piece uh, has a very small name. So to, to bring this, I use a very simple formula in, in in Google Sheets, like if is a very simple. Uh, I use the 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 text that I want to replace to a very small one. So what I have America do Sul, South America, but I only need so uh, so also that because it's the name I use it for the pieces that I I, I need it. And then I really uh, the only thing I, I really need to do is concatenate this in the other uh, the name with the address of the piece. So you can see here the address in my desktop uh, of the pieces. So so uh, they are combined now. Uh, then I only export uh, uh, the, uh, this table like with names and the, the locations of each of each part. Uh, exporting CSV file, you can do it in XML. X and L2, but I think CSV is much more simple. Uh, this is the, 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 how, how the table is uh, look like, like a, a, uh, how a set of is look like. Uh, here's the pieces with each name, you know, because that I, I concatenate them. Uh, and here is the, the screen of Illustrator with a variable, and each variable that we, we can change, uh, conjunct with, uh, uh, and I also use a plugin that I that the name is variable important that helping me to to put the name on them uh, properly. So uh, 
this is like it's a very long to explain all this, but uh, uh, this is the all, all pieces generated. But I bring uh, some uh, tutorials that you can use to make this work. It's, it's, uh, it's a very uh, common material that you can do. So you only need to using variable data merge in the illustrator, and and you only use, and you only need to variable import it to make it happen. Uh, and thank you. Sorry for all mistakes that I have made in English. And that's it. Tá. É, bom dia ou boa tarde para quem estiver na Europa. É, hoje vou falar um pouco sobre o uso de, de dados para a criação de, de novos produtos. E aí falar um pouco também sobre a diferença entre, entre os tipos de dados também. É, tá. Então, antes de começar a falar de como é, é importante você usar os dados para criação de produtos, enfim, é, é importante saber quais são os tipos de dado, né? afinal, porque tem muitos tipos possíveis que a gente pode usar e muitas vezes um mescla junto com o outro e a, a variação e a combinação pode ser é, muito ampla, né? Então, acho interessante saber esse, esse contexto do que, que os dois grandes grupos de, de dados. E eu atualmente sou é, designer de interface e eu trabalho muito com o pessoal de experiência de, de usuário, que são, trabalha com o X. Então, basicamente, na, na nossa área, a gente separa por dados quantitativos e dados qualitativos. Tem até uma certa briga, assim, que tem muita gente que fala que ah, o qualitativo é mais rico ou algo do tipo, mas só que, na verdade, os, os, dois, são, os dois são importantes. E aí eu separei esse... Na verdade, isso foi baseado nesse Christian Hoher, eu não sei pronunciar o nome dele, mas, basicamente, ele fez um, uma matriz que separava tanto o comportamento quanto a atitude e em relação ao, ao qualitativo e ao quantitativo. E basicamente é, a parte qualitativa da coisa é você entender o que é, como é feito aquilo. Então, se um, um usuário, uma pessoa, ela age de uma forma você quer entender o porquê que ela age daquela forma. E na questão quantitativa da coisa, você quer entender primeiro o contexto, tá, quantas pessoas agem dessa forma. E basicamente é meio que por aí. Um é mais o como e o outro é mais o, é, o quê. E aqui eu só coloquei alguns tipos de, de tipo de pesquisa que pode ser tanto mais para o lado qualitativo da, da coisa quanto o quantitativo. Então, tem coisa que se mistura, que usa, acaba mesclando tanto a, o dado qualitativo quanto o dado quantitativo. Então, por exemplo, se você vai fazer um formulário, é, esse formulário pode ter é, questões múltipla escolha, né, que são coisas mais objetivas, então, seria um, dado, um tipo de dado quantitativo. Mas, a partir do momento que você perguntar, tá, e por que você escolheu isso? Isso já seria uma, uma coisa qualitativa, que você quer entender é, a resposta daquela pessoa sem ter uma prévia antes de dar uma opção. É mais, sempre, normalmente, são perguntas mais... Então, resumindo, basicamente, os dados quantitativos são o que acontece e o qualitativo é, é como. E aí, como eu falei, os dois são igualmente importantes e normalmente eles são usados em etapas um pouco diferentes do processo de descoberta, né, de criação de um, de um produto. Mas primeiro você tem que entender, é, no, na parte mais do quantitativo, você tem que entender se aquilo realmente faz sentido a nível de tipo ter um mercado para isso, sabe? E o qualitativo é você conseguir, de fato, conseguir atender é, as nuances daquele, do que a pessoa quer, do que o cliente ou o usuário quer. 
E aí eu vou falar um pouco sobre um case de um produto digital, né, que é a Netflix, e como que ela usa, usou os dados né, para a criação do produto dela. Então, no caso, eu citei aí o Stranger Things porque foi um dos primeiros grandes produtos originais né, que ela criou. E, basicamente, ele foi criado baseado no, em algoritmos da, da plataforma. Então, ela foi muito relacionada com esses dados quantitativos porque ela via que tinha uma certa tendência dos usuários que vinham filmes de terror com anos 80, que tinha criança. Então, ela meio que juntou isso para criar um produto. Então, realmente foi baseado em, nessa pesquisa em entender o que, que o usuário dela é, faz e como ele se comporta de uma forma geral. Então, foi um dos casos que foi baseado também em mais em quantitativo do que um qualitativo, mas é um tipo, é um, é um exemplo né, de, de uso de dados nesse sentido. Mas tudo bem que a, a Netflix é uma empresa enorme, né? <risos> que, mas ela também começou bem, tipo, era vendia, alugava DVD. Né? Mas enfim, a questão é que não é só um produto digital que pode usar dado qualitativo, quantitativo, enfim. Porque muita gente hoje fala que, ah, vou criar um aplicativo e pronto, sabe? Mas só que é, um produto não necessariamente vai, precisa ser digital. Eu entendo que nessa, nesse momento que a gente vive, que não a proximidade né, meio que diminuiu, mas, ao mesmo tempo, não tem tanto esse... É, tem uma, né, são bons esses produtos digitais, eles realmente fazem um impacto, mas só para lembrar que não são só os produtos digitais que podem é, ser impactados né, com, com o uso de, de dados. E aí, falar um pouco sobre que a, a inovação ela não é necessariamente uma tecnologia, é, porque muita gente acha que, ah, nossa, eu vou fazer um produto inovador, aí vai usar a maior tecnologia do, do momento, a mais nova, e que aquilo ali já vai ser o suficiente para gerar um produto legal, sabe? E não é bem assim, porque a, a inovação ela só existe a partir do momento que ela gera algum tipo de impacto. Então, não faz sentido você ter, fazer, você fez um produto, sei lá, um, sei, um carro qualquer, e aí ele é mega, ele é ótimo, só que a nível de botar em produção, ele ficaria milhões e milhões de reais e ninguém ia comprar, sabe? Então, tipo, ele não, não tem um mercado, então ele não vai, de fato, gerar um, um impacto. Tem que ser uma coisa que realmente seja, é, tenha relevância e seja, tipo, quando for entrar no mercado, ou o que quer que seja, ele tem que realmente fazer, conseguir fazer a diferença. Então, tanto para a empresa né, que está gerando aquele, aquele produto, quanto para o usuário dela, porque senão também não tem, é, não tem como gerar valor em cima daquilo. E aí, para citar né, um, um exemplo desse, mais relacionado a, a, a produtos analógicos, é, eu trouxe um exemplo aqui, que na verdade é um exemplo lá da, é, criado por dois engenheiros da África do Sul. E, mas para focar em isso, tanto em, em produto digital quanto, quanto analógico, tá? que... Sempre quando você vai criar algum, algum produto, alguma coisa, você tem que entender tipo, qual é o problema daquilo, qual é o problema que você quer resolver e como resolver ele. Né? Então, basicamente, é, eu trouxe esse exemplo aqui do Hippo Holes, que é, que é... Eles tinham, lá na, na cidade deles, tinha um dado né, quantitativo de que é, muitas, tinha, faltava água 
né? Então, as pessoas tinham que andar muitos, às vezes, quilômetros para conseguir pegar água. E aí, as pessoas pegavam, normalmente eram as mulheres e, a, e as filhas. Então, acabava que tinha uma certa é, evasão escolar das crianças e, da, e das mães. Normalmente, acabava que ficava com dor nas costas e tal. Isso aí era um problema que era visível de se ver a nível de, de números. E aí, é, esses caras, eles chegaram, como eles viviam lá na, na área, eles entenderam que, tipo, quando a pessoa ia para pegar água, ela levava um balde aqui, assim. E aí, só que o balde, ele, a pessoa andando quilômetros, enfim, a distância que for, você vai deixar a água cair. E um balde também não dá para ser tão grande. É, então, eles criaram esse, essa espécie de galão, que é um carrinho, que, porque eles viram que o problema era a água cair e forçava o, o corpo da pessoa. Então, basicamente, eles fizeram esse carrinho que a pessoa pudesse botar água lá dentro e ir empurrando, porque aí ia precisar ir menos vezes e voltando, né? porque não ia perder água e não ia forçar tanto a, os músculos né? da pessoa. Então, depois esse projeto até é, é, foi para outros lugares também, né? já deu uma certa crescida, assim. mas eu só quis trazer ele para exemplificar isso, que não é só tipo, ah, vamos fazer um aplicativo, sabe? <risos> então, tem várias maneiras de gerar impacto. Então, basicamente, eu queria concluir falando que todos os dados são, são importantes sendo usados de forma correta, de forma é, pensada, né? Porque o quantitativo ele vai te falar o que está que errado, o que pode ser melhorado. Então, ele é importante, mas, ao mesmo tempo, você tem que entender é, a fundo o que, que realmente é a dor da pessoa que está ali. Então, mesmo que seja fazendo um, um infográfico mesmo, você tem que entender que, cara, para quem que eu estou fazendo aqui? O que, que aquela pessoa quer saber, sabe? Sempre se botar no lugar da pessoa, porque qualquer número, qualquer dado, qualquer coisa, tem uma pessoa por trás, né? Então, sempre tentar pensar nessa no ponto de vista dessa outra pessoa. E... Tá. e basicamente é, é isso, né? Que a partir do momento que você se coloca no lugar da pessoa que você quer atingir, que você quer fazer esse, esse info, esse serviço, esse produto, ou o que quer que você queja, queira fazer, é, a partir do momento que você se põe no lugar dela, você está a meio caminho de, de ter um, um produto que vai ser legal, que vai ser usado e que vai, vai gerar algum, algum tipo de impacto para aquela pessoa. E é isso, gente. Bom dia.